15 things you didn't know about the Rolling Stones. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hey there, Aluxers, and thanks for joining us for another insightful video. Our mission here at Alux is to provide you with insights into the biggest and best things in the world. And there's no doubt that even for members of the billionaire elite, entertainment and show business is something that has a long-lasting and powerful effect on people. Coming in pretty near the top of the music industry power rankings is the subject of today's video, the iconic rock and roll band The Rolling Stones. Formed in London in 1962 and currently comprised of Mick Jagger, Ronnie Woods, Keith Richards, and Charlie Watts, the band has been at the forefront of the rock music scene for over 55 years. While the Beatles took the 60s world by storm with their own particular brand of boy band pop, the Rolling Stones were seen as the edgier, dirtier, more seductive alternative in the British invasion. And with more than 240 million albums sold worldwide, it's safe to say that Mick Jagger and co. have cemented their place as one of the most significant and influential bands in history. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. We think it's time to take a closer look at some of the more interesting tidbits. So without further ado, here are 15 things you didn't know about the Rolling Stones. Number 1. Mick Jagger's distinctive accent is the result of a childhood injury. It's impossible to think about the Rolling Stones without hearing Mick Jagger's iconic, cheeky, chappy, cockney accent in your head. But what you probably didn't know was the legendary frontman's voice was a result of a childhood injury. The truth is that Jagger possessed a fairly posh upper-class accent in his childhood, but all of that changed when he bit a section of his tongue off in a sporting accident. Some say it was a basketball injury, others say it was a gymnastics accident, but no matter the cause of the incident, there's no doubting it changed the way that Jagger spoke forever. Number 2. They had early success with a Beatles cover it seems as though it's impossible to mention the Rolling Stones without also mentioning the Beatles, and vice versa. The history of the two iconic British bands is actually more intertwined than simple style comparisons, as the Stones actually had one of their earliest mainstream successes when they covered a Beatles song called I Wanna Be Your Man. The origin of this cover came from the fact that the band's first manager, Andrew Lug Oldham, once bumped into John Lennon and Paul McCartney getting out of a taxi cab and invited them to a studio recording where, as they say, the magic happened. Number 3. Mick Jagger was a promising athlete Though it's hard to picture Mick Jagger as anything other than the charismatic frontman of a world-famous rock band, the word is that he actually was a very talented athlete in his youth. An active member of sports teams in his elementary school days, Jagger even set the record time for the half-mile distance run. Perhaps the singer could have been picking up gold medals rather than gold records. For the sake of music history, we're happy he chose the former. Number 4. Brian Jones cast an early shadow over the band Brian Jones was a member of the original lineup of the Rolling Stones. Jones lived the archetypal rock star lifestyle, sex, drugs, and rock and roll 24-7. In fact, the guitarist's partying got so out of hand that he was actually asked to leave the band in June of 1969. Tragically, just a month later, Jones drowned in the swimming pool of his home in Hartfield, East Sussex, after yet another evening of excessive partying, joining the infamous 27 Club, a group of celebrities who have all tragically died at the age of 27, which includes Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and Amy Winehouse. Though he was not in the band at the time of his death, most fans still regard Brian Jones as one of the most important figures in Rolling Stones history. Number 5. The Rolling Stones are one of the wealthiest bands in the world Along with selling more than 240 million albums worldwide in their long and distinguished career, the Rolling Stones are also kings of touring, and this combination has led them to being one of the wealthiest bands in the world. Although the exact figures of the band's collective net worth are unknown and difficult to accumulate, what we do know is their last world tour grossed an astonishing $500 million, and the latest individual projections estimate frontman Mick Jagger to be worth $300 million alone. Other world tours over the years have grossed figures like $300 million, with their last three tours estimated to have made more than $1 billion. With an average ticket price of $370, we can see where these huge numbers come from. Number 6. Rolling Stones Tours Are Always a Sellout Always a major draw, filling huge arenas and commanding high ticket prices, any Rolling Stones tour brings in the big bucks. They are currently holding the position of second highest grossing tour ever. 
The 2005 to 2007 A Bigger Bang Tour saw them play 147 dates and gross receipts in excess of $558 million. Top spot is held by U2 for their 360 Degrees Tour with receipts of $736 million. Number 7. It took more than four decades for the Stones to headline Glastonbury. Despite being one of the biggest and oldest rock bands in the world, the Rolling Stones did not perform at Glastonbury, the world's greatest music festival, until 2013. Michael Avis, the festival's organizer, described the performance as his high spot of 43 years of Glastonbury. Number 8. The Rolling Stones made history in Cuba. Many bands were forbidden entry to communist Cuba because their music was considered ideologically deviant. After the death of Fidel Castro and a relaxation in some laws, in 2016 the Rolling Stones became the first British band to play in Cuba. The Stones also have another political coup. In 2006, they became the first international rock band to play in China since the Cultural Revolution under the communist rule, and even though they had to amend the lyrics and not sing five of their biggest songs, the concert was the first show by a foreign band to be shown live by CCTV, the Chinese state broadcaster. And one more, the Rolling Stones were the first rock and roll band to perform in post-communist Russia. Their application to play Moscow in 1967 had been denied after Russian political officials saw the band perform in Warsaw. Number 9. Little Red Rooster was banned in the USA. Although a blues standard song, the Stones altered some of the words for their version. Little Red Rooster hit number one in the United Kingdom in 1965, but it was banned in parts of the USA because of the objectionable lyrics. The Stones have the accolade of being the first British band to be banned in the USA. Number 10. The band was turned away by 14 New York hotels in 1966. If you're following the Rolling Stones' blueprint of rock stardom, then you haven't made it until you've trashed a hotel room or two. The band's reputation for wreaking havoc on their surroundings became so prolific that they were turned away by a total of 14 different New York City hotels when they were looking for a place to stay in 1966. As well as concerns about their reputation as room wreckers, many of the hotels that turned the band away were also concerned they wouldn't be able to cope with the hordes of fans camping outside. You can learn all about some of the most expensive hotels in the world, no doubt frequented by the Rolling Stones at some point, by clicking on the top right hand corner to watch our dedicated video. Number 11. The Rolling Stones were the first British band to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Grammys. Many imagined the Beatles would have beaten the Stones to this prestigious accolade, but the Beatles didn't receive their Lifetime Achievement Award until 2014, while the Rolling Stones received theirs in 1986. Number 12. Charlie Watts had to keep his marriage a secret for his image. In 1964, in the early years of the Rolling Stones, drummer Charlie Watts married Shirley Ann Shepard. As the band became more and more popular and started to amass an avid fan base, executives encouraged Watts to keep his marriage a secret because they thought fans would prefer the image of a group of confirmed bachelors. However, this didn't remain the case for long, as in Charlie's own words, I tried to keep it a secret, I wanted it to be a secret, but I suppose if Khrushchev can't keep a secret, neither can I. Number 13. Mick Jagger has wooed a string of glorious and glamorous women. Rock stars generally attract adoring female fans and certainly in the 1960s and 1970s, they tended to marry someone famous and glamorous rather than the girl next door. It was certainly the case for Mick Jagger, who, as well as dating Marianne Faithful, a British singer, and Marsha Hunt, an American singer, married Nicaraguan model Bianca de Macias. After his divorce in May 1978, thanks to his affair with Bibi Buell, an American Playboy model, he dated supermodel Jerry Hall. They got married on the Indonesian island of Bali. During this period, Jagger had an affair with Italian model singer Carla Bruni, who later married French President Nicolas Sarkozy, and also Brazilian TV personality Luciana Jimenez. The Hall-Jagger marriage was declared invalid and unlawful in 1998. Jagger continued to date Jimenez until 1999, when he began a two-year relationship with British supermodel Sophie Dahl. He then dated Lorenz Scott, a fashion designer who left her fortune to him, which Jagger used to set up the Lorenz Scott Scholarship at Central St. Martin's College in London. Jagger then began dating American ballerina Melanie Hamrick later that same year, and she remains his current girlfriend at the time of this video. Number 14. Mick Jagger became a father at the age of 73. When Melanie Hamrick gave birth to a son in 2016, Mick Jagger was 73 years old. Devereaux is Jagger's eighth child from five mothers. The other children are Karis Hunt Jagger, whose mother is Marsha Hunt. 
Jade Jagger, whose mother is Bianca Jagger, Elizabeth James, Georgia and Gabriel Jagger, whose mother is Jerry Hall, and Lucas Jagger, whose mother is Luciana Jimenez Morad. Jagger also has five grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Number 15. Bill Wyman has kept a diary of the Stones' activities since 1961. If you think the diary of Bridget Jones is a scandalous read, then how about the diary of a member of the Rolling Stones? An avid record keeper, the Stones' bass player has kept a diary of all the group's comings and goings since 1961. The diary is said to be over 22,000 words in total, and stored on four separate computers in case of technical fault. His long-term goal is to put together the most comprehensive and detailed history of the band there is, and with his insider knowledge and painstaking notes, we cannot wait to read it. Thanks for spending some time with us today, Alexers. We hope we gave you your fill of rock and roll history. Have you ever been lucky enough to see the Rolling Stones live in concert? Do you have a favorite song or album of theirs? Let us know in the comments. And how about one final fact as a thank you for sticking with us right through to the end. Number 16. The band popularized the Tequila Sunrise Cocktail Known for their love and appreciation of all things alcoholic, the Rolling Stones have actually been credited as popularizing the Tequila Sunrise Cocktail in the United States. The legend goes that in the early 70s, the band would travel from state to state, instructing the bartenders in their hotels on how to mix the then relatively unknown drink. It became a firm favorite of the band after they were introduced to it in a restaurant in Sausalito, California in 1972. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.